Okay, so here we have that if x plus 2y times dy dx is equal to 2x minus y, what's the value of the second derivative of y with respect to x at the point 3 comma 0? Okay, so the idea here is to basically isolate dy dx and then take the de derivative again, and this is just going to require using implicit differentiation. Once you get this, the derivative, then we just simply plug in 3 for x and 0 for y, and then we solve or evaluate the equation, and you're going to get some number, some value for um, this answer. So let's start off. So we're going to divide by x plus 2y, because we want to get dy dx by itself. We're going to dy dx is equal to 2x minus y over x plus 2y. And then we're going to differentiate this with respect to x, or sorry, yeah, with respect to x. But this is going to be an implicit equation, so we have to use implicit differentiation. So that means when we're going to differentiate a term including y, or, or basically differentiate like, you know, y, a y term, you are going to have to multiply it by dy dx. So let me show you what I mean. So we're going to use quotient rule. So let's start off by making the denominator squared. And then we're going to take the derivative of the top. The derivative of the top will be 2 minus the derivative of 2x is 2 minus the derivative of y, which is just 1. And then here we go 1 dy dx. I don't have to put that 1 there, but I'm just kind of highlighting that. Now remember, this is quotient rule. So this is just the derivative, of the, the derivative of the top. So we're going to need to multiply this whole thing by the bottom, x plus 2y. Then we subtract the top expression. And now we multiply by the derivative of the bottom. So the derivative of the bottom, the, deriv the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 2y is 2. And then we multiply this again by dy dx. So now, wherever you see that dy dx, we're going to substitute this expression here. So what we're going to get is that second derivative is going to be equal to 2 minus this, so 2 minus 2x minus y over x plus 2y times an x plus 2y minus a 2x minus y times a 1 plus a 2 times. Again, that's, we're going we're gonna to substitute this for the first derivative. This is going to be all over x plus 2y squared. Now, it's just going to look long and tedious. And um, it's probably really just the problem that they want you to make sure you're confident in. But all you really have to do here is substitute 3 for x and 0 for y. And then you evaluate this. And this isn't too bad to, um, to evaluate as long as you don't make any mistakes. It's kind of just an algebra problem. So let's try to do a little saving some work. So 3 for x. So here we're going to get a 6. So this becomes a 6. That's a 0. So you get minus 6 over, remember, 3 for x, 0. So minus 3, 6 over 3 times a, zero, a 3 for x, 0 for y. So this whole thing times 3. minus, again, a 3 for x times, so 2 times 3, 6, minus a 0, this is it's just 6 minus 0, so this is just 6, times a 1 plus, oh, I should put another parentheses around here, plus a 2 times 
Here we got a two times three, so six minus a zero over a three plus a zero. So six over a three here, so we really just have a plus a two times two there. All over a three plus a zero squared, or just a three squared. And right, let's go one more line. I should do it. I should do it. So two minus two. That's just that. This is nothing. This becomes nothing because this is just zero. The whole thing is just zero. Minus six times a one plus a four. So minus a six times five. All over three squared, which is nine. So this is just negative thirty over nine. Reducing it, this will be a negative 10 thirds. And so then our answer will be A. All right, last one in this packet. Okay, here it says that we have the position of a particle moving along the x-axis is given by x of t equals the sine of t minus the cosine of t. And what's the acceleration of the particle at the point where the velocity is first equal to zero? Okay, so maybe it can sound a little like confusing if you're not comfortable with physics, but it's really pretty simple. Like the acceleration is the second derivative of position. So acceleration, this is just x double prime of t. Velocity is just x prime of t, the first derivative of position, because velocity describes how position is changing, acceleration describes how velocity is changing. So let's first find these two derivatives. So x prime of t, take the derivative of this, and I'll be cosine of t plus sine of t. And then now we take the derivative again. The derivative of cosine of t is negative sine of t plus cosine of t. OK, now it's saying, what's the acceleration at the point where the velocity is first equal to 0? So we want to find where the velocity first equals zero. So remember, this is the equation for velocity. Let me just write it like this. Let me just put v of t to make it clear. v of t is equal to x prime of t. And then a of t is equal to x double prime of t. So when the velocity is first equal to zero, so we set this equal to zero and first solve for what t is. Now make sure you know your unit circle. You're basically looking for when cosine and sines are opposites of each other. When are they opposites? And it's something you kind of just have to, you have to make sure you really know your um, unit circle. And this is going to be when they're at 3 fourths pi. Let me just draw a little picture. When we start here, we rotate around over here. This is, this is pi. Half of pi is up here. Whoops, that's one fourth. So three fourths pi is right here. This is your answer over here. Because remember negative x, the x's are negative, the y's are positive, so they're both opposite here. Okay, so then this is the solution to this equation when the velocity is first equal to zero. So now we just find a prime or x double prime of 3 fourths pi. So x double prime of 3 fourths pi. So the negative sign of 3 fourths pi plus the cosine of 3 fourths pi. I'm kind of working backwards or opposite direction. And so the sine of 3 fourths pi is, is positive root 2 over 2. So this is negative, then negative root 
2 over 2 plus the cosine of 3 fourths phi, which is actually negative root 2 over 2. And then so negative root 2 over 2 minus negative minus root 2 over 2 is just root 2 is to have that up. This is minus root 2. And so then our answer will be A.